Welcome back to Dino Park Development. This is part 12. So let's make a copy of our project. I can't believe it's already part 12. This time, I want to continue working on the hatchery. And I had an idea. So right now, the hatchery screen itself is kind of pointless. We go in here, we click on hatchery, we show the pods, but we're not using the pods. But the incubate button, this is the part I want to work on. Choose a dino. Right now you can only choose T-Rex. But I was thinking, imagine if we end up having like 20 dinos. That's probably not going to happen. But if, if someone remixes it and adds a bunch of dinos, that actually could happen. A real dinosaur fan could make all those dinos. There's not enough room to list them all here. Plus, it's hard to make text dynamically. Like what if you don't what if you haven't found the triceratops genome yet, then it shouldn't show up here, right? So I had an idea. And the idea is we already have these icons to represent the dinos. Imagine this. Instead of saying triceratops, we have a picture of a triceratops. We just have a list of icons. So we have like Triceratops and oh, I can't show the T-Rex because we deleted the second sprite. But then we have the T-Rex icon and then, you know, Gallimimus and um, Stegosaurus and just whatever. We just have a list of icons. That way we can show a lot more things. We can easily show 20 dinos in this space without having to scroll or do anything really fancy. And we can even shrink the icons a little bit if we need more. And then we already have the selection thing. So you click one to select it. And then there's just one incubate and modify button. So just to explain what modify does, I mean, right now it does nothing. But the idea is you can modify the genome to give different attributes to the dinosaurs. You can make them stronger or healthier or last longer. And each modification gives you more dinosaur rating points which makes more money for your park so that's what the modify button will eventually do so we need a little info pane to show the selected dino and whatever modifications there are and we need the incubate button and the modify button so i kind of like that idea we're gonna move these down to line up right where the other ones were. I think it was, was it 170? Oh, wait, was it minus 170? Minus 150, that looks about right. And then the modify button, let's do the same thing. Minus 150. And then above it, this area is gonna be the info about the selected dinosaur. Um, we're not gonna worry about that yet, but that's kind of the plan where it'll eventually go. That means we can get rid of this text because we're not going to show a list of names here. Choose a dino. I think that's still fine. But we're going to have to add something to tell the dino template that it needs to populate this list. So let's create a message. Uh, and that's coming from this button. The thing that displays that screen choose a dino is going to broadcast um, it's going to show the incubation list screen ah so there we go so we already have a message now this is going to get a little complicated and I'm not sure that it's a good idea but let's try it and see what happens when I receive Oh, wait a minute. No, we we should already have a screen dot show, don't we? When I receive, oh goodness. We have to, because we have to show ourselves on the map. What happened to that? Oh goodness, it's hard to find stuff. Let's do clean up blocks just to put them all in a row. So there's take turn. There's, oh, there's screen.show. Um, now, if we are a clone, 
then we process this. Well now, ooh, oh boy, this is complicated. Okay, maybe this is not a good idea. Um, it might be simpler. Oh, I hate having the costumes in two places. The nice thing about this is you go to costumes and this is gonna be where all the dino costumes are. If we had a different sprite show up on this screen, then we would have to have all the costumes in that sprite as well. So, we're just going to try it. We're going to try it. Here we go. Um, when I receive, if I'm a clone, uh, let's not take over this message. Let's not take over this message. Let's do it this way. Let's go to the incubation screen. And here, we're going to broadcast a new message. Uh, broadcast. So we're going to show, and then we're going to broadcast a new message called hatchery dot um, show dino list. How about that? Yeah, that sounds good. And then we go over to our dino, and now we can look at that. It didn't clean up this comment. <laughs> it left it where it used to be. Now we can work on this new event. When I receive hatchery.showDinoList, what are we going to do? We're going to create a clone twice. Oh, no, we're going to duplicate that. We're going to set um, a clone ID. Should, do we need a clone ID? No, we don't need a clone ID. We don't need a clone ID. Instead, how about if we have a new variable called uh, my dot... Um, oh man, hold on a second, hold on a second. Hatchery dot show dino list. So we're, we want to create a clone of the main template and have it select the correct type, just like here. So we're going to switch costume to my type. We're going to do all that stuff. This is all going to work, but we need something to tell it that it's not a real dino. It shouldn't be taking a turn. It shouldn't be moving around. It should just be sitting still. And so... How do we do that? We're going to say this is a special, not a type of dinosaur, but let's just make a flag. This is kind of a, this is not a very pretty way of doing it, but let's just try this. We're going to make a new variable called my dot um, is in list. <laughs> is in list, is in dino list. Or how about just in dino list? Yeah. For this sprite only, because some of the clones are not going to be in the dino list, and others are. So we're going to, sorry, set that to one. My dot in dino list is going to be one, and then we need to set the type. Uh, set, oh. set my dot type to try. Uh, let's start with the T Rex. Then we're going to create a clone. Then we're going to set another type. And create a, of Triceratops. Triceratops. And create a clone. How are these going to position themselves? They need to have a number, just like clone ID. Uh, just like clone ID, but not clone ID. <laughs> because these aren't like the other clones. We're going to call this my dot dino, dino list index. An index is just another. It is a name for your position in a list. That's your index. So 
we're going to set that variable instead of the clone ID. So we've got my dot dino list index is going to be one and then two of course and the type is triceratops create a clone and then we're gonna probably reset these variables we don't want to be in there oops that's the wrong variable we don't <laughs> well that was silly okay my dot in dino list we're going to set that back to zero because the master template is not going to appear we're creating these clones okay so now when i start as a clone we yep that looks fine select it as zero go to random position we don't want that switch costume to my type and show now go to random position here's the key if we're in the dino list we don't want a random position uh, let's see here where is if let's go to control if else if oh, and then we need an operator equals So if my dot in dino list equals zero, then we're going to go to a random position. Right, let's put that after here. This is how it's kind of set up. So if we're not in the dino list, that means we're just one of these sprites roaming around. We go to a random position. Otherwise, we have to go to a specific x, y coordinate. And we're going to simplify that for now of course but let's go to go to xy and we're just going to do let's see what's a good position uh, I'm looking at the x coordinate of this I think I choose a dino so it should go around here to start let's see let's let's say negative 180 and then the y coordinate negative 180 and the y coordinate let's make it 80 whoa negative 1808 no sometimes scratch doesn't select everything usually when you double click it selects everything let's try it oh see it selected the number but not the negative sign it seems to be different yeah, there it selected everything i don't know plus our dino index tells us how far we are in the list so we know this sprite is um, no we don't know how big it is let's just guess so we're gonna need an operator so a plus we're gonna need a times and then we need our dino list index which tells us how far into the list we are and then each sprite we're going to give it i don't know let's try 70 let's try 70 pixels no that seems too big that seems too big um, let's try 50. and then this is our what is it negative 180. oh but dino list index starts at one so this is going to make the first one appear at negative 130. we want it to be negative 180 so we actually have to start at minus 230 now there so that is our x coordinate and then the y coordinate is 80. now eventually if we have two rows we're going to have to calculate the row and the column rather than just use the index variable here but for now we only have two things so that's fine now i'm kind of curious if this is already going to do something Let's see what happens. I have a feeling that they're going to appear and then start wandering around. It's going to be kind of funny. So let's go to incubate. No, go to hatchery. Go to incubate. Nothing appeared. 
Oh, you know why? Because when screen.show, is it hiding in screen.show? Here's screen.show. Um, we are going to ignore this. If we're a clone, so we only want to do this if we're a clone and not in the info list. I'm not sure this is even the bug, but let's give it a try. So um, we want in dino list to equal zero because these new clones were created are going to have a one. And so we don't want them to hide. Okay, let's start over so we don't have so many clones floating around. Go to the hatchery, incubate. No. Wait, did those two just appear? Oh, I think they did. It's working. Okay, let's freeze them now. Wait, why are those still showing up? Do they think that they are in the info list? My, or in dino list equals zero. So we're only, yeah. Maybe, we're, oh, we're not initializing. Wait, no, it's zero, it's right there. It says my dot in dino list is zero. So, they should have hidden. Why aren't they hiding? Ooh, this is getting complicated, isn't it? If my is clone equals one and my in dino list equals zero, then process this. So when we click hatchery, what? There's two of them. Now there's four of them. So when I click this hatchery button, set screen name to hatchery, that should be fine. When I receive hatchery.show dino list, is something, is something broadcasting that? Let's keep an eye on this block. It, it should flash if it executes. It flashed. I don't know if the video caught that, but this flashed when I clicked the hatchery button. But why? Oh my goodness. That's the wrong screen. So it's doing what it's supposed to, and I just put it in the wrong place. We actually want this to happen on the choose dino list, which is this one. Oh, it's all mixed up. So let's fix that real quick. Go up here to broadcast. And okay, show, go to back layer, sure. And then broadcast show dino list. I guess I should have called it incubation list. That's what the screen is called. Okay, let's try this. Now everything's invisible and we click incubate and they all showed up. No, why did they all show up? Why did they all show up? Hmm. So if we look at the dino, when I receive hatchery.show dino list, we set this variable to one and we create our two clones, and then we set the variable back to zero. That should be fine. When I start as a clone, is clone selected as zero? If we're in the dino list, if we're not in the dino list, go to a random position, otherwise go to this X coordinate, which looks good. Switch costume and show. Now, if I go, if 
we hide this, no, I can't. I can't show the clones from the editor. Well, one thing I want to do just to rule it out is initialize these variables properly. So when green flag is clicked, we do not want to accidentally be in the dyno list. So let's set that to zero. And we do not want to accidentally consider ourselves whoops, in, dyno, um, in dyno list to zero. So we don't want to consider ourselves to be in the dyno list and we don't want to have an index. Create a clone, create a clone. When I start as a clone, that should be fine. Hatchery.showDinoList. And then let's go ahead and modify take turn just so that these guys are not being so crazy. Um, and I can copy this condition, duplicate. So we only want, whoa, oh, I thought I could scroll while I, while I was carrying that. Apparently I can't. Oh goodness, look how long this state machine is getting. I kind of have an idea of, of a way to fix that. Get rid of that and plop that in there. And good, now they're not moving around. So let's start this again. Green flag, go to the hatchery, click incubate. Look at that, I can move them around on this. Whoa, what? How are there so many? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I know why. We're receive, oh, I just <laughs> each clone is creating clones. When I receive hatchery.showDinoList, I keep thinking this is the main sprites code all of the clones are receiving this message. So there's three total dinos, the master template and then the two clones we initially create. They each receive this message, they each receive two clones, now we have six dinos. It all makes sense, look at that. So we can uh, copy this condition. Wait, well, no, we don't even need to, I'm just, it's too hard to drag things around, honestly. Let's just get a new if statement, wrap this whole thing. We only want to respond if we are not a clone. The master sprite, oh, variables. The master sprite is the only one who's supposed to respond to this. So if my dot is clone is zero, then we respond. Let's try that. I'm feeling good about this. So these two dinos are acting normally. Click hatchery, they hide. Click incubate. And the Triceratops accepted a challenge. <laughs> oh my gosh. Didn't I wrap the whole take turn thing? Oh, oh no. Battle.findOpponent is a separate message. Oh goodness, maybe this wasn't a good idea trying to use this master template might not be a good idea. Let's copy this condition, slowly bring it down here. I'm sorry, this might be because I'm using a, a touchpad thing. Oh my gosh. Let's go to control, grab an if. Ooh, that's ugly. I don't like this. I don't like one, two, three, four, five nested if statements. And one of them is an and, so it's compound. So it's really like six nested if statements. Oh, that is ugly. But let's see. Oh yeah, we, we, can't, we can't leave it like that. That's horrible. But for now, Let's see if it works. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a cleanup episode, I think. Okay, go to the hatchery, click incubate, and two dinos not doing anything. 
and that's awesome this is what I was hoping the selection part still works and I want that to work because I want you to be able to select a dyno on this screen okay but they're not spaced far enough apart they were like this that's surprising uh, let's go to our little formula 50 times X or 50 times the list index let's try it needs to be much more let's try 80 and then what was this supposed to be it was supposed to be minus 180 and now we need an offset of 80 so that's minus 260 and let's try that hatchery incubate oh that's pretty good that's pretty good I think we can go further well here let's hide those variables I want to see how it lines up with the text get rid of that get rid of that hmm thoughts I think it actually looks okay it look it looks fine so now we're gonna have like an info pane right over here to show you details which is a lot like the info screen but unfortunately I don't think I can reuse that sprite because it was left aligned so the idea is you click Triceratops then you click incubate and it should make a Triceratops right, look at those two sprites still standing there so when the incubate button uh, we need to have a hide dino list message let's do that real quick when I receive new message hatchery dot hide dino list this will be a nice easy one if we are one of these clones that are in the dino list so that is if my dot in dino list equals one then we're just going to delete ourselves delete this clone and then if we go over here to the incubate button this is where we set the hatch type we're also going to broadcast a hide dino list button here uh, so that is events hide by hide dino list broadcast hatchery dot hide dino list now that should get rid of those clones let's try this so we go to the hatchery we go to incubate we click incubate and they disappear perfect well that is what I wanted to accomplish in this episode it's not perfect by any means but I like this idea we're gonna have a list of icons and I think we could have one two let's see you know what let's let's move those a little like here and over this way a little tighter now we can have one two three four and then here's our info pane that might be enough room so we're, we have rows of four one two three four so I think we can show like 16 dinos here and we could make these smaller check this out well no, I, I can't I keep forgetting I can't update it in the editor but let's let's do that real quick let's move them over to the left a little more how about minus 290 and give them a little less spacing so how about 70 try that go to hatchery go to incubate oh no that's too far to the left so minus 280 but the spacing is fine hatchery incubate oh no 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 that's weird it looked like there was plenty of room oh because I changed this okay never mind try it again oh my gosh no let's try to 60 there that's not bad that is not bad at all I wonder if the next episode in the next episode should we add a third dino that might be cool because then we'll see how this just stacks another one it might be 
kind of cool. But I'll have to do some artwork. You know, I actually drew these icons. I used reference material, but I I traced and drew and using this trackpad <laughs> made these icons. It was pretty crazy. I think they turned out pretty well. Okay, um, actually, we have a few minutes. Should we go ahead and do this? So now, instead of the incubate button setting this, um, where's the incubate button? Here we go. So right now it just sets hatch type to T-Rex and broadcasts the hatch command. We're gonna we're gonna change that. We're gonna get rid of that actually. And instead, oh no, can I undo that? Can I undo that? Yeah. We do want to broadcast hatchery.hatch. .hatch. We just don't want to broadcast, we don't want to set the hatch type. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be cool. This selected dino is going to. Oh boy. Okay, let me think. Oh boy. Hold on a second. D doesn't this update the globals? Let's see. If we go here and we look at selected, when update globals isn't setting the type? Let's see here. Update type. That's screen dot show. Take turn, screen show. Oh, when the sprite clicked. Broadcast, deselect, selected. Um, it's just switching the costume. Okay, well we need an, I was hoping we could do something using our existing globals, but we're not even setting the type there. And we're not setting the globals here anyway. So let us just do this. We're going to broadcast a new message called hatchery. Dot, um, dino chosen. And now we can listen for that. events when I receive hatchery.dino chosen. Now, if we are the selected dino and we are in the dino list, that's our condition. If operators, we're going to need an equals and another equals and an and. So if we are selected, that's my dot selected. See that I double clicked the 50, but it only selected the five. That is so strange. It seems really inconsistent. So if we're selected and we are in the dino list, then we're going to update um, what was it called? Hatchery dot hatch type, I think. Hatchery hatch type to my type. So the, the selected dinosaur is the one responsible for updating this variable and then broadcasting that same message that uh, we we're already using. So we're kind of inserting ourselves into this chain of messages. Whoops. No, don't create a clone. Wait, where did broadcast go? There we go. Broadcast hatchery dot hatch. And then this tells the main dino. Technically, we could do it right here. We could do it right here. Because, well, no, because we don't know the clone ID. Yeah, we don't know the correct clone ID to use. Only the master template 
knows the correct clone ID. Okay, um, I think that should be fine. So let's give it a try. We're gonna go to incubate. I'm gonna click the Triceratops and incubate and did anything happen? Did anything happen? Here's when I received hatchery.hatch. Let's keep an eye on these and see if they flash. Go to hatchery, incubate, select the triceratops, incubate. Oh, I saw it. It did it. That flashed. So, but this did not flash. So does that mean that my selected is not one or in dino list is not one for that dino? That doesn't make sense. That does not make sense. It should set it right there. Go to the hatchery, incubate, choose the T-Rex and incubate. That doesn't work either. Ooh, did I bite off more than I can chew for this episode? I thought this might only take a minute. I thought it might only take a minute. Set hatchery hatch type, broadcast hatchery.hatch. Hatchery.hatch, only the master template listens to that because of this is clone equals zero. Change clone ID, set the type, and create a clone. That should be good. That should be perfect. Okay, we're gonna have to do something here, like maybe uh, say something. Let's let's use our debugging techniques. We're gonna say. Oh, I can't duplicate that. Uh, thought I could just copy that variable real quick. Let's say my dot in dino list. Let's check that variable. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I I might know what's happening here. Okay, yeah. I think it's our old friend, our old bug. Broadcast and wait. We are broadcasting hide dino list. Do you remember what that does? That deletes the clones. Then we broadcast dino chosen. And oh, I was using and wait. Well, look at that, but it's just in the wrong order. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, dino chosen and wait, and then broadcast hide dino list. Let's give this a try. Go to the hatchery, incubate, choose the triceratops, incubate. Oh, we have another triceratops. Let's try another T-Rex. We have another T-Rex. Look at that. So the only problem was I switched the order here. So it was hiding the dino list, and the hiding the dino list, if you remember, uh, if we find it over here, it deletes the clone. So then the clone doesn't get the next message. It doesn't get the dino chosen message. And then, oh yeah, it all it's all coming together because it used to send this hatchery.hatch message to the main dino template. So we didn't need the clones at that point. But now we're depending on the clone. So I don't really like that. Honestly, I do not like that. I think it might be better if selecting the, the, the dino, like right here in the when this sprite clicked, if we set if we are in the dino list, we could set hatchery.hatch type. We could do it right here, right? I 
kind of like that better. Let's let's do it. All right, we're we're doing it. We don't need that. We don't need that. We just need if we're in the dino list, set hatchery.hatch type to my type and don't broadcast that. No, we don't want to do that. Look at that. This is looking good. This is simplifying it. We got rid of a message. Now let's go to our incubate button and instead of broadcasting dino chosen, we're broadcasting hide dino list and hatchery.hatch because the hatch type has already been set. And let's add a little comment here. Hatchery.hatch type is set when a dino is selected. by the dino whoop, dino sprite. Put a little comment in there so that we know what's going on and why this works. So that when we look back on it, we're not completely confused. Because I can already tell that's a little complicated. It's a little hacky. But let's see if it works. Incubate. Go to T-Rex. Incubate. We got another T-Rex. Now if we go to Triceratops. Incubate. We got another Triceratops. And if we don't click anything, we're going to get another Triceratops because that's what we clicked last time. Yeah. So this is another thing we're going to have to fix. When we get to this screen, um, let's see, when show dino list, we're going to reset hatchery.hatch type right here. Right here. We're going to say... set hatchery.hatch type to blank. I think that works. I think that works. And then in the incubate button, we want to wrap this in an if. And if hatchery dot hatch type is not equal to blank, so not equals, and I think this works. Can we do this? Just make that blank. Let's see what happens. Go to hatchery, incubate. Click incubate and nothing happens because we have not selected a dinosaur. Now if I select one, then it works. Okay, that's looking good. That is definitely enough for this episode. Maybe that should have been a separate episode. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Hope it was informative and see you next time. Bye.